Hello, welcome to the IPFS weekly call for Monday the 7th of October 2019. Uh, I am making brain in the absence of anyone else hosting. I will be your host for this week. Uh, we're going to go around the room and do some lightning talks. It's going to be super good fun. Um, so without further ado, Eric, what are you working on? Uh, hello, I am Eric, visual design and uh, as it turns out, sort of general design -er around here. Uh, and I am on the IPFS documentation squad. We're, we're tasked with improving the way people learn about IPFS and uh, hopefully helping people learn a little bit more efficiently. And the, the, the main context for that learning is docs.ipfs.io which um, we've been sort of evolving in little ways, but uh, it, it, it's pretty much static and has been so for a long time. And previous quarter, we, we focused on uh, kind of analytical work, sort of identifying uh, spots where, where we needed to improve. And uh, we are, we've identified a, we, we're probably going to build a, a ViewPress um, site, a beta site, and uh, leave, leave the current site as is and build this sandbox over here for a soft launch uh, in this short quarter, which we now find ourselves in. Uh, let's see, we could, one of, one of the issues, I'll share my screen here. So the current, the current website is, uh, was generated super quickly um, and it's been, I think, very useful, uh, but uh, it, it was sort of a one-person operation, and uh, it's it's getting stale. And th there are a lot of issues surrounding, uh, for example, the information architecture, the structure of the of the navigation um, is it's it's super long for one thing, and uh, not all that easy to find your way around. And you know, if if you notice here, so much of the content actually just takes you off the website itself and so it can be a pretty disorienting experience so we want people to know that they can that this is sort of a definitive authoritative spot to go to to learn about how to how to do ipfs and one of the things that we just added recently was a simple little content um survey you know and and uh we're tracking whether people find different pages useful or not. Uh, currently, I think IP, how IPFS works, which is a, a recently rewritten page, uh, is I think that's the, uh, that's getting the most, oh, holy smokes, this is awesome votes. Uh, and I would share the link, but I don't know how to do that in this while I'm sharing a screen. One of the things that, that I have experimented with is a new information architecture. And this, is, this is something that we've tested. I'm using a website called Workflowy, uh, which is kind of a to-do thing. It's been around a while, uh, and it's super straightforward, and it's not really, I'm hacking it. It's not really meant for this. But uh, I love the way that, that it, uh, it collapses everything. And so if I'm testing the structure of a website, um, to show someone a fully nested, you know, indentation bullet pointed Google Doc isn't all that helpful because it doesn't mirror their experience at all. So this is what we've this is what we've been testing. Um, a simple, pretty straightforward uh, install IPFS. You know, people want to install right away. You know, get started, action oriented, uh, and. I'm not going to dig too much into this, but I'll, I'll share it. And I would love to hear feedback. Um, I, uh, you know, what people think about this and if, if you think it might, uh, you know, be useful to even you and your own experience or, or, uh, or if you could put yourself in the mindset of, of people who are unfamiliar with IPFS and maybe are landing on this page at first time. Uh, but I'll, I'll link you to this and I'll link you to, uh, issue where we can where we can have some uh, where the conversations are already taking place 
Um, I won't dominate the rest of the meeting, but we've got a lot of fun docs stuff going on and look for not, not just a new beta, um, a, a new a beta version of the doc site, but also incremental improvements. You know, we've been trying to bang out hot fixes and, uh, one of the one of the major areas that that is uh, surfacing is just the whole understandability of IPFS and the concepts surrounding it. Uh, and what seems to help a lot is uh, visualizations, you know, information graphics and whatnot. So I want to I want to try to apply myself to a lot of that this this quarter uh, in the cracks, if possible. I get to nominate someone now, right? Dirk. Hello, I'm Dirk. Um, so in the last few weeks, I've been working on uh, improving BitSwap performance. Uh, in particular, um, in particular, I've been looking at how we can distribute information about where stuff is uh, on the network, um, and then BitSwap can kind of like figure out where it should get stuff from in a more efficient way. Uh, so. I was kind of implementing a proof of concept, or I implemented a proof of concept, and it was a little buggy. So I've now find out all of the bugs, and it seems like it's working. And so now I'm working on uh, improving the performance of the, the proof of concept. Um, any questions about that? Jim, what are you up to? Um, no, I'm just excited about that. Um, we're, David and me and Roel are working on uh, test ground stuff and it seems like that's a, a, a high-ranking candidate to get into some comparative benchmarking. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I have a test ground demo um, which is doesn't do a whole lot yet but we can show it. Is it David, do you think it's good to show that? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so this is a it's very early stage so um, Let's see, so don't expect a lot. You're not gonna see a lot here. Um, so you see the screen here. So this is uh, just an EC2 machine on AWS that we spun up and I've got test ground um, code checked out. So you can find test ground at IPFS slash test ground. And it's the main thing. Roles started this uh, code base and it's gonna be the, the base platform written in Go uh, for writing our tests that will you know, spin up like 10,000 nodes and run a DHT and uh, do it. it. We can run a test and get a lot of data, dump it to Elasticsearch and do a lot of analysis on it. So it doesn't do a whole lot yet, but uh, this is the basic test we have. So um, I'll just show you what the command line looks like. It's like test ground, it's, it's using some Docker. I'm gonna spin up 10 Docker instances and run this DHT test. That's all in the code base there. So, and I just rebooted this machine, so I don't know if this will work, but it should work hopefully. Oh no, can't find it. In a, what the? I never, I've never seen that one before. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have rebooted the machine. Um, not find it in available non. Okay, that was. It's not a very good demo. Um, it was working. Uh, a minute ago, so um, <laughs> uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and then if let the next person go and then um, if I can get this working before the end of the call. I can do it again. The demo gods are vengeful gods. Um, I'm trying to ship, well, at least cut a release branch for JS IBFS 39. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, we're going to have um, initting and starting a daemon in a single command. Uh, we're going to have a limit to the number of concurrent HTTP requests in a browser, which is actually going to be super good. Because uh, at the moment, when you like do lots of stuff, you can end up preloading large amounts of content uh, and just generating all this HTTP traffic. And it all backs up in the browser because you can only have so many requests in flight at a given time. Uh, and then your actual interesting commands tend to get put into this queue as well. Um, so we're gonna have uh, like a fix went in uh, that just limits the number of requests that you can have. 
uh, for the non-important, for like the background tasky kind of HTTP stuff, that all gets like throttled now. Um, so your user experience in the browser should be much improved after this. Uh, we're also having config profiles finally. So Go for ages has supported um, kind of preset profiles that you can combine together to do things like make your test run faster by not trying to find uh, other nodes, you know, locally over MDNS and that kind of stuff. So you can just got these like simple keywords that you can use to customize your config uh, in one easy step. Uh, we've got a new version of web UI uh, that's going to be in it as well. And we're also going to add support for uh, some missing commands, well, a missing command, which is uh, removing blocks over the HTTP API. Um, it's also going to fix a bug at the moment where you can remove a block that's pinned in JSRBFS, which is kind of embarrassing uh, and not great. So that's going to be fixed. Uh, that's going to be really cool. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? This is an easy crowd. Um, Avrik, are you still, are you working on crazy hardware stuff? Always. I got a workshop coming up, so hopefully getting a lot of version one prototypes through. Mm, let's see. I'll take you guys around with my laptop. Uh, so for all of my hardware, I have like a local node that runs from my bag and that's on my laptop and to keep my laptop powered, I, these are my old batteries that are all over the place and hence making new batteries. They're kind of overpowered. I could sit down in a coffee shop and last for like two days. So it's nice, but also, yeah, hopefully running all of those. Mm. Although, let me keep on going for a walk. Do, do, do. Oh, here is a hat for frame stuff. So you put it on 200 Hertz, eight channels of brainwave information, and my router broke. So I used to have a big router in the first version to have my network scale beyond the eight that can fit on my phone. But here's a smaller one, Raspberry Pi, that's actually running a consistent server that doesn't turn off every time my computer boots. Here is the old router that I fried that I'm getting a new one of today. Uh, yeah, this hardware stuff, classic me not being able to integrate the cool IPFS suggestions that you guys made last time about encryption. I did look into textile.io and PGAS in the sort, but I haven't been able to get an implementation up. But yeah, those are my updates. If you're uh, running IPFS, if you're running JS IPFS on a battery powered device, you'd be very interested in the low power profile, which may or may not land at some point in the near future. Ooh, so when you talked about. <laughs> like five years, 10 years, a few months. I mean, we're talking, we're not talking astronomical scales. I know. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna, so we're gonna get the initial set of profiles out the door and then it's just a case of like, now we can identify things and then we have an easy mechanism to, to add new ones. So, so that's definitely one that's gonna be on the list. Yeah, absolutely. My back appreciates since I have to carry all of my batteries in my bag. Fighting the good fight. Mm -hmm. Uh, you get to nominate someone next. Uh, Jay, since we're fellow Arizonans, what are you up to? Uh, all sorts of mischief, a bit, thank you. And um, <clears throat> so I'm doing a deep dive into session initiation protocol. And um, since David's on the call, David, I posed a question uh, to Alex and Ali in few others 
Is anybody connecting from the IPFS platform, LibP2P, and uh, connecting to the public switch telephone network? If, if anyone is connecting, as in if anyone is using it or trying yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, is, is there a way to seamlessly connect, you know, LibP2P with SIP with P, the PSTN? Oh, yeah, like so easily as in like just, it's just like another LibP2P module. And so there, it's not built yet. Like there is not, no work in progress. So I don't think anyone has started that at thread yet. But, um, but like in the way that LibP2P is built, should be like, like create or yet another discovery protocol. And, and from the perspective of the application layer, it should be, oh, I want to use this other way to transfer my data um, and this other way to listen for like incoming connections and so on. Um, yeah, but like, I, I don't know, I don't know anyone that has started that yet. It would be like a lot of fun though, like to see that working, like <laughs> transfer files over the, the phone line. Wait, isn't that the internet? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, but like, do, do you know any? Like, are you like looking for that? Like, are you working with someone that's trying to build something similar? Well, or I'm. Like, yeah, I, 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 I've got a use case in mind that's uh, bubbling up to the surface for a number of reasons, and I've been, you know, kind of bringing this up among the VOIP community and so forth and uh, highlighting what you're doing with libp2p and just sort of exploring, you know, who's doing what and um, Alex and Ali have been um, helping me with it. So yeah, I, I was just wondering what the status is. It, it mm -hmm. seems like it's doable via libp2p. I just didn't know if anybody was doing it. The idea is to yeah. be able to enter, an address and then always have as a default uh, experience a an old copper line phone call if if nothing else is available but yeah. first first to you know see if there's rich media available um, over you know lib p2p web rtc so forth um, but if none of that's available then you always get a a phone call versus uh, you know, just 404 or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's definitely, like, again, like, part of, like, the lip peer, peer whole, like, goal is to make sure that, like, those things are very easy to integrate. And so, again, like, the way it's designed is supposed to make it simple. Uh, that said, like, I also know from previous experience, like, sometimes it's not necessarily an integration that is the the hard part. It's really just, like, just getting the the developer experience right and like just integrating with some of those more um, legacy slash current systems uh, that are deployed on large telecoms. And so, yeah, like it, it, it sounds like a very fun uh, thing to do, a very like powerful thing, like to communicate, like this is also possible to communicate over yet this other way of connecting. Uh, so far, we have been spending a ton of time more on like overlay side of things. So like, Lip peer to peer is still very IP um, centric, as in like it, it really thinks about like whatever is uh, like whatever it can do over an IP, and like it doesn't really think about like the physical connections between nodes. So it has no notion of like routing protocols like OSPF or RIP or whatever that happens on another way to like update browsing tables and so on. So like it doesn't have those, those smarts yet. It's something like we want to be able to um, like get into. Uh, and actually, I actually spent like my like two weeks ago, one week and a half ago, like um, three days at um, information centric networking slash name data networking conference. Uh, like just sharing our progress from my PFS loop review side and like also hearing like the developments on, on that world. Um, in, in like, for, for those of you that are not familiar with information center networking or name data networking, it's kind of like another way to think about like like internet addresses. So instead of like having numbers and, and uh, an hierarchy of IPs, you get names for machines. So like you get this hierarchy that are these names and like names have some reasoning, some, some, some information about like what is the service. And, and so it makes like things overall more manageable this is just like a very high level. And, and so they really 
think about how to do routing efficiently um, in, in like they, they really care about the underlay part. And so it is possible that like IPFS or lip repair soon, as in sometime in the future, uh, might like understand like all this, all those networks like set up themselves and like operate over those networks. Actually, there's even like a paper that got published that already showed like some really promising results of just like running IPFS over an NDN network. But, but like that, that's like as close as I know to some kind of like underlay integration uh, of IPFS slash with group here. Cool. Could you post a link to that conference? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll post it on the notes doc. Perfect. We are out of time, even speaking as fast as he does, David. Almost couldn't fit all his thoughts into the available space. Uh, really typical. <laughs> Cool. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining this call. This has been the IBMS Weekly Call. Uh, you should come back next week. We have a guest speaker, and it's going to be really interesting. Um, yes, thank you. I'm going to stop recording now. Bye.